Good morning. Hello, that could have gone really bad. Let's just ignore that, I've done it. Hello, 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 and happy Friday. Friday. Friday, everyone. Friday. Yeah, it is Friday. Friday. So, you may be wondering, why are you happy that it's Friday, Max? Well, the true answer is, I don't really care, because all the days are just running into one at this point. It's not really any difference. That's kind of deep, but we're gonna move on. Day is day 50. It's day 50 of the vlog. What's well, insane to think, because, would it go any further? Probably not. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let me take this. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh my god, I'm gonna sneeze again. Oh, <laughs> bless me. Oh, that sucks. What was I gonna say? Will I make any more? I don't know. I have no idea. I originally did the vlogs thinking I was gonna do five days, and now I've done ten times that. So, day 500, possibly. Uh, I doubt, no. But it's gonna be really hard to end the vlogs because I'm really enjoying them. And why would you stop something if it's fun? Oh, it could be illegal. Okay, don't take that advice. But today, as always, it's another wonderful day in the house. But as always, I have another smashing video for you to. Today. I definitely know what I'm doing. Don't question it. No, but today I'm going to be talking about editing and when it comes to making short films. But but we've been getting some really good support lately. I just thought I I, don't, I feel like I don't say that enough. But yeah, no, the support I'm getting is absolutely insane. Just crazy to think that people actually watch this. That's kind of mad. This is definitely out of tune. Editing time. Okay, so that is my video of the day finished. And it's only midday, how about that? That's pretty dandy. I'm gonna make myself some lunch and I need to talk to you about something that's probably gonna help quite a lot of people. Today is the third and final episode about how to make a short film. Now this episode, I'm not gonna show me physically doing it, otherwise it, it, it would just probably confuse you more as this might not apply to other people if that makes sense. So, I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet. Um, this kind of applies to, in general, the whole tone of editing. But down below, uh, one of my friends, Charlie, he done a video about some of the best tips for Premiere Pro. That's a really good video to follow if you're just getting started. So there's a few little tips I'm gonna tell you that might help you when it comes to editing. And um, let's go through them. So my point number one is software. The software you use is very, very unbelievably important because it, it's what you use. It's like it's like what camera you use or what lenses you use. So there's loads of editing softwares out there I can suggest. I would say the best thing to edit on would be either a computer or what I use, a Mac. Um, I use a MacBook Pro, what has been absolutely amazing. I must admit, I've put it through its paces quite a lot and I'm quite worried about it now. But that's my fault because I was stupid when I got it three years ago and um, yeah, it wasn't the best move by me. But with my next laptop, uh, I'm probably, just, I'm gonna stick with a Mac. I really like the layout. It still depends on you. I think that's the main thing. Software, editing software, as I said, is very important. I use Premiere Pro, which is part of the Adobe package. I have the student package what kind of gives you loads of Adobe software for a good price, like a very good price. Let's look out for deals, Adobe always do trials as well. So Premiere Pro is a brilliant editing software and I'd say it's part of the industry standard alongside Avid. Both of them are kind of, kind of depends on what project. I'd say Avid is more directed towards bigger film production where Premiere Pro is kind of balanced, you know. I feel like I can edit anything on Premiere Pro. From go to universities, I've seen a mix between both, but other editing softwares I recommend looking at if you're thinking of investing money into is obviously I said about Avid. Also look at Final Cut, it's a Mac software, so it's with Apple. But also free ones, I'd say definitely try out a free one. The best one for free is definitely DaVinci Resolve. Um, some of my, loads of my friends use DaVinci, but obviously there's loads of other editing and softwares, but I definitely recommend downloading DaVinci because it's free, it's free software. There's also softwares like Sony Vegas that cost money, but I believe there's free trials. Always try out a free trial, see how you feel about it before you invest money. That's kind of a main thing with editing softwares. Especially when it comes to making a short film, you've got to be thinking about what you're editing and what you're editing for and what kind of stuff you're going to be doing. There's only so much you can do on iMovie. So tip number two uh, is definitely organization. Half of editing is organization, making sure you have your clips where you want them. One thing that I learned the hard way is that on Premiere Pro, it finds your files by the file name. I'd say name your footage is important. If you don't want to do that, what well, I don't, so for my vlog, I don't name my footage because that would take so unbelievably long. Uh, upload it to a hard drive if you have one. Please, please, please invest into a hard drive if you're thinking about doing big edits, especially with films. But just keep it in good organization 
organization will help you down the line. Within editing softwares, you can create folders or bins, as they're called on Adobe, but these hold your different files. And if you're sourcing for files, you're looking for that one clip, or you're looking for that one song, you'll know where to find it. So organization is especially key if you're doing something like a short film or something bigger, especially with client films as well. If they want logos in there, if they want title sequences, numbers, whatever, Organization is key. Number three is about the edit itself, and this is structure. Structure cuts and continuity. Unbelievably important. This is probably more evident for stuff like film. Obviously, there's times where there's exceptions, especially with horrors where it's done on purpose. Continuity is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things with films, and it can be saved by an editor. So when I mean about structure, continuity, and cutting, it means that you cut at the right time. Editors are responsible for the pacing of the film. You know, it, it gets the film going, so you have to know when to cut it at the right time, uh, when to cut into a musical cue, when to uh, fade in the music, when to fade out the music, when to fade in the dialogue, when to cut to different characters during a dinner scene. An edit can kind of save the film and it's evident through loads of different Hollywood films when it's done correctly and badly. So what I mean by continuity is when the shots line up and it makes sense. So a good example would probably be, say your character smoking a cigarette. They're smoking it in one shot and the cigarette's full. They cut away, it cuts back to them and the cigarette's basically almost done within three seconds. It makes no sense. So you gotta make sure that your edits line up, even with the smallest details, but also that's partially down to what you record on the day. So you have to always have that edit in mind when you're making your film. A technique I like to use is imagining you're editing the film when you're making the film. So think, oh, okay, I'm gonna cut away to this shot and this bit, I'm gonna cut away to this. Therefore, you get the right cuts and you'll be thanking yourself so much in the edit that you got that shot, even if you don't use it, just for security. So tip number four is scheduling. So when I mean by scheduling, I mean like scheduling when you're gonna edit. You need to put aside quite a lot of time for editing. If you keep to a nice schedule of editing, one, you're improving your editing skills by using the software and the UI getting used to it and two you're gonna get the job done also before editing sessions I recommend watching your film through seeing how it is and make sure you just keep watching what you're making don't get into unhealthy patterns of editing at two o'clock in the morning it doesn't help you at all you're gonna end up spending more time re-editing it when you could have been getting some nice sleep tip number five is exporting exporting is obviously incredibly important what I mean by exporting is when you download the video final product that you export this may not look like a big part of it but it sends a mess up a lot so just make sure that you're exporting in the right aspect ratio. Uh, aspect ratios are quite important depending on what you're doing. I'd say for these logs, I use a two by one aspect ratio that fills the whole iPhone screen, it fills the whole screen of a laptop. But the common is probably 16 by nine, 21 by nine, very cinematic widescreen, or what I tend to be using now, a 2.35 by one. It's my personal favorite at the moment. So the final tip I have is something that I would probably recommend to everyone, and that is experimenting. So when I first got Premiere Pro, one of the first things I'd done was experiment with loads of different effects I wanted to try, such as cloning. Yeah, they're the dark times, very dark times. Uh, but there's, again, thousands of tutorials. Cinecam.net do brilliant videos about experimenting with different effects. I can't really recommend them more for trying out different effects, but I would say a nice tip is going out, go out for a walk, six to 10 clips of nature or people walking. Put them in a folder called experimenting. Create loads of premiere timelines and just try out different effects, such as mirror effects, you know, echo effects, uh, matte key, alpha key, masking effects, mask transition, color changing effect. The possibilities are really endless and it's about experimenting. Even if you don't use those effects down the line, if you know how to use them, then you know how to do other stuff. It leads onto other stuff. It gives you a better understanding of the user interface of the software, making you more known to it so you can edit faster, more precisely. So yeah, there's some of my tips of editing. Obviously, some of these may not apply to you. This is kind of aimed at people who are maybe starting up their YouTube channel or are doing their first short film. So without further ado, thank you for watching the video. Now I'm sorry if this video didn't apply for you, but make sure you come back for next week. I have some pretty exciting stuff planned. This is day 50. <laughs> thank you for watching as always. Why not? I already said that. We'll stop doing that. Without further ado, thank you and goodbye. Oh, I nearly dropped the camera.